Oh, 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 we've got it. It's working. It's working. We've got snowflake veering into fabric. No fuss, no muss. Just configure it. So any data that you have in Snowflake can just kind of be in fabric. So you can manage your data inside of the Snowflake. So you got all your processes running and doing its thing like it does over there inside of Snowflake. But then suddenly just is in fabric. Ah, oh, God, just so freaking awesome. Ah, oh, get it. Okay, okay, before we get into that, that, like showing you actually how you configure it, head over to krosbi.com. Um, uh, make sure you like hit like on the video, subscribe to the channel. Um, and if you need help with any of this stuff, that's when you head to krosbi.com. Uh, click on get, get yourself a data guide. Myself or one of my associates will come over, help you out, get you through any of this stuff. Uh, but with, enough with that, you know, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Come on. Okay, so big announcement. Hey, Charles Webb, uh, thank you so much for this. Uh, public preview for mirroring to Microsoft Fabric is out. There's a couple of services that do, that, do that mirroring right now. Uh, number one being uh, Azure SQL, that's up and running. But one of the big things we've got is we've got uh, Snowflake set up. So you can actually mirror Snowflake uh, over from wherever it happens to be. So in AWS, which is where we're at today, we're in AWS Snowflake mirrored into Azure um, Fabric. So, oh, so easy to do. Just gotta get set up. Some things you do have to take into consideration. Uh, whatever ID you're gonna set up uh, to do that streaming, it needs to have the create stream, uh, select table, show tables, and describe tables enabled. And then you're gonna need to make sure that that, uh, that warehouse, the compute that's running on the on the Snowflake side is up and available to keep the sync up and live, okay? So uh, that's what we're gonna do. We are going to take our adventure work schema that we have over here inside of, uh, inside of Snowflake and we're gonna replicate that over into uh, Fabric. So let's get into it. All right, so start from a clean slate. So I'm gonna go into my workspaces and I actually, so a little bit of a, like a working splate. Oh, did I, did I delete it? We're gonna create a new workspace. We're gonna call it Snowflake Mirror. Now, a note on this, oh, there we go, Snowflake Mirror. It does need to be in a trial capacity right now. So I'm gonna select a trial capacity to get that up and running. I don't know why, like, I have a fabric capacity, it just doesn't work, but it has to be in trial capacity, so uh, make sure that's there. Hit apply, I'm sure you can upgrade it, right? Um, and then, now natively, if you switch over to the data engineering space, oh, where is it, data integration? Okay. Oh, data warehouse, yeah, right here. Data warehouse, you can see that it's right here. So here's your uh, mirrored Azure Cosmos DB, here's your mirrored Snowflake. This is in preview. Uh, here's your ma mirrored Azure SQL, right? So just click on mirrored Snowflake. Now I'm gonna need some things to configure this. So I'm gonna set this up. I'm gonna call this my Snowflake mirror. Oh, no, this is AdventureWorks. Right, so just go ahead, go ahead, create that. It's gonna spin up, ba -da -ba -da. it's gonna ask me a handful of questions here. I'm gonna need to know the server. I'm gonna to need to know the warehouse. I'm gonna to need to know, uh, know the database and an ID and a password to make those connections work, okay? So uh, I'm gonna create a new connection in this case. This guy asked me, what am I gonna to connect to? I'm gonna put in the server name and I'm gonna put in the warehouse. Now, please note, it's you have to put in a warehouse. It doesn't like it if you don't do it. It will cause you all sorts of problems. Um, it won't not let you in because the default warehouse will let you like be in there, but it, it, it'll it cause you problems, okay? So put this in, I guess who had a problem with it? Yeah, this guy, this guy. Uh, so uh, who, who on the Microsoft side helped me with that? Someone on the Mark, Mark, Mark helped me with that. So uh, a big shout out to 
Mark Price, thank you for getting this up and running. And, and Charles Webb, he, he, he pinged me. We got through all this stuff, but it was all my fault. All right, I'm going to connect this. I got my connections working right. It's going to load. And it's going to ask me what database I want to connect to. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -ba 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 -ba. Now, this, and I don't know if it's because I'm in a demo environment or whatever. This seemed like it was the longest part of it, but I just select my adventure work. I click on connect. And now I got two options. I can mirror all the data, which is what I'm going to do. But I could go in and I could choose which items I want to mirror. So it's actually going to uh, go in and load up the schema from adventure work. Now, the nice thing about doing this is it tests that you have access to the data over on the Snowflake side. So maybe you only had access to like read schema or something weird where you could just see the stuff, but you couldn't actually read the data. By going in and selecting the, on this and selecting the preview, you're actually going to get that data that, that's going to run back against the Snowflake stuff, cache out so I can, okay, I could see that I've got access to this. This is fantastic. Now I could choose, like, let's say you only want to allow someone to have a small part mirrored out, right? Like your model data, not your non-model data or whatever it is. You don't want your, you want your gold layer data stuff moved over. You could just select those items. In this instance though, I want it all, right? I want all my stuff. So I'm gonna click on mirror all data. I'm gonna click on mirror database, okay? This is gonna spin for just a second. Look, it's going to say, look at this. Uh, mirrored Snowflake is starting. So it's going to start running like hundreds of queries. Little tiny queries are going to run back against Snowflake to get that initial pull. Now that initial pull and that hydration of that mirror, because what ends up happening is uh, Delta uh, files get created inside Snowflake. And, or I'm sorry, inside uh, Fabric, right? So the Snowflake data, it's mirrored over into Fabric into these Delta files. Okay, and that's what's actually up and running. You can see that's happening. I can click on here for monitor replication down here, or there's monitor replication up here. You can click on it, and you can see that the, the monitoring status, you know, this thing like pulls every 60 seconds or so. If I wanted to, I could go back into uh, Snowflake and I could actually go over to monitoring and see that I've got all sorts of queries that are starting to run, and you could see successes in here the big things that i'm looking for are uh where is it go tables where'd it go ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. okay here it is these drop streams if exist so these are the streams that are getting created inside a, of snowflake to start sending that data over those are there i should be good so i should hit f5 here oh my gosh look at that look at that Holy cow, all my data is starting to stream in. Man, freaking fantastic. Uh, so I could close this. I could see that it's up and running. If I head back into my workspace, oh, looky here, boys and girls. Look at this. I could see, well, actually, you can see it from here too. So I've got my mirror together. I've got up in my upper corner, I can head over to my SQL analytics endpoint. Right, and I can start to see that data is starting to load into here. Right, so all of my tables are starting to show up inside of here. Dow, blah, dow, blah, dow. Dang, is this awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So now that this is together, I could go in and I could set up my queries. I could just, you know, I could run some weird query against this thing. And I mean, this is my lake house. So like, I'm pretty sure I could create views on top of this bad boy. Yep. Yeah, that's right. So I could take queries that I've been running against uh, my snowflake. I could create views on top of this. I could just bring over my data. Uh, and ah, ha, 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 I can create my model right on top of this. So I can have a direct lake model that's sitting on top of my Delta files. It's running against my Snowflake mirror data. It's speeding into my reports. It's servicing up my end users. All right here, all no fuss, no muss, up and running less than 10 minutes from even including the intro. This thing took less than 10 minutes. How awesome is that? Nope. Okay. So if you found that as useful as I did, 
hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, uh, leave a comment down below if you've got questions on how you can you can get this up and running. I want to hear from you. How is this transforming the way you you work and operate? I mean, me for one, I'm excited for it because it offers all sorts of like easy to like lower my overall cost of compute on both the Snowflake and Power BI side because now I'm just man, you know, Snow or the Fabric will manage that trickle update as to updates that occur inside of Fabric. I don't have to worry about users building out crazy pipelines and running them when they don't need to run it. Like the service just sets it up, gets up and running, and just up and it's available. Now, this is in preview, so you got to test it out, make sure it doesn't work or whatnot. Don't put any production workloads on it until you're like rock solid on it. Like I'd probably run it for a month, make sure it doesn't like break or have issues or you know how to troubleshoot any things that come along. But generally speaking, you're going to be good to go because I say it's in preview. That's April 4th, 2024 when I'm recording this video. Who knows when you're watching it? You know, maybe it's five years from now and this is GA and you just go in and configure it and use it. So oh, I'm just so excited about this. You have an amazing day. Peace. Baker Tilly Digital combines strategic industry insight and advanced technical expertise to uncover and solve your digital transformation challenges. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website at bakertilly.com digital.